Apologies in advance if I talk a little slower or seem a little bit less coherent. I am recording this um, a day after uh, I've gotten my second vaccine shot, and I actually feel okay. I had some friends who really got knocked on their butts by this thing. Uh, I am, however, a little low energy today, but I still wanted to get this shot today so that I can try and have it uploaded in the morning before this becomes even less topical than it currently is. And the this that I'm referring to has to do with, well, I was going to say it has to do with the casting announcements for Netflix's Sandman series, uh, which is upcoming adaptation of Neil Gaiman's seminal uh, comic book work. But it's not really that I'm going to focus on. I'm going to be talking a little bit more about some people's reaction to the casting. Uh, because, um, well... Some of the characters announced don't match what, if you were going to do a strict visual-only interpretation, these actors would not be comic accurate. Uh, or to put it another way, not everyone's the same race that they appeared to be. Part of what's actually interesting to me to look at these reactions, that there's a couple of reasons, because like, look, Every single time any beloved adaptation or major franchise announces a diverse cast, there is a certain sliver of fan that is going to complain about it absolutely no matter what. That, like, there just is. And I generally try not to give oxygen to that if I can help it. Uh, in this case, there were a couple of things that I just found interesting and very telling uh, about the complaints. And like, I did actually scour around Twitter, not for too long, because there's only so much of that place I can take, to like, make sure that I wasn't uh, misappropriating things. Uh, Neil Gaiman himself actually uh, did me a favor and retweeted some of the more egregious ones with his own response to them, which is part of what I'm going to be talking about. But um, the first thing that is interesting to me is that with the new announcement, which was a whole bunch of characters, there were, God, how many were there? There were 12. There were 12 actors confirmed in an announcement. And there were two main things that got the most complaints. And some other things that, like, nobody brought up, which, again, I find kind of a bit telling. So, let's uh, start with... Before I get into the race and the casting thereof, because honestly, I'm going to spend a lot more time on that. First is, some people got really irritated at the fact that there are pronouns listed on the announcement. Now, the one thing that I will actually cop to is that the way it's presented doesn't do a great job of making it clear whether those pronouns are for the actor or for the character. Um, I do believe they are for the character, and that's why they're presented underneath the character names. Um, so, on the one hand, I actually like that they are there, especially for something like Sandman, which, canonically in the comics, Desire is referred to as them. And that is reflected in this announcement. So, it's worth putting up there, because not everybody is going to be just he or she. Uh, that said, it could have... I, I'm not a... I'm not a visual designer. I don't know necessarily how they could have made it clear, but I feel like it could have been made clearer that these were the pronouns of the characters, not necessarily the actors. And if it turns out they actually were giving the um, uh, the pronouns for the actors and I'm misinterpreting it as the characters, that would also prove the same point. So there's that. And a lot of people really complained about that. And again, unless you're going to point out the fact that it's a little confusing, which I'll give you that one. Like, what's the problem? Uh, <laughs> Like, why is it a bad thing to know the pronouns of the characters? Again, especially given that one of them does not use he or she. So that one was weird. And then, of course, there's the bigger one, which has to do with the race of some of these uh, actors. I say some. Not really. Pretty much everybody focused on death. Which is uh, interesting for a couple of reasons. Uh, so, the first one being, Death is not the only character who has been cast outside of the race that was depicted in the comics. Well, I say that, arguing that Death actually has a race, uh, it's just a little iffy, but, like, we'll come back to that. There's layers to this. But the characters of Rose Walker and Unity Kincaid have both been cast as black. 
I couldn't find anybody complaining about that, despite the fact that both those characters are white in the comic. I, which, you know, on one hand, I suppose it kind of makes sense, because Death is the bigger, more iconic character from the franchise, but on the other hand, makes way less sense, because Death is, if you don't know the Sandman comics, Death is a member of the Endless, isn't really a human, and doesn't really have a race. Yes, the way Death is depicted kind of fits what is thought of as the stereotypical goth girl, but if you are going to look at that and say that Kirby Howell Baptiste is not going to be able to play that part because of how she looks, I've got a number of questions for you. The first being, um, how well do you actually know the source material? And because, look, visually, to look at it, you could look at Death and go, oh, well, she's white. Yeah, but she is so white that even if you cast a white actor, you would still have to slather them in makeup or use CGI pigmentation or something to make them that white. So if you want them to be as white as the characters of her and Dream and the rest of the Endless are in the comics, you already can't cast that. So no matter who they cast, there was going to be heavy makeup use if they even decide to go for a comic accurate look, which they don't have to. Like, what is important about Death is that Death is warm and comforting, and that the personality and the projection, the sense that you get about her is that, okay, if I encounter you when I die, I'll be all right. And you don't need to be white to bring that. You don't need to be comic accurate visually to bring that. Oh, and I saw some people flat out claiming that only white people can be goths. Mother f mm. That one pissed me off. Because the two gothiest people I know are not white. And I know they get a lot of crap for the fact that they are goth and that is their aesthetic. And they freaking own it. And they look great in it. But you do not have to be white to be goth. So, if that's part of your argument, leave. Goth is an aesthetic. It's not cultural. It doesn't belong to white people. It's a pull towards and an affinity with dark things, dead things, black, as a color, as a clothing choice. No part of that requires you to be white. But even setting that aside, like, Okay, first of all, strictly speaking, the Endless don't have a race. They do, however, appear very pale. But as I said, so pale that if you want comic accurate, which they may very well not even do, but if you want that, you're going to have to slather them in makeup no matter what. The appearance of these characters is variable. They are shown to look different to different individuals. So the look that we, the readers, see of them is not even locked in as their canonical true form. So you can't even argue that. And the big one, as I pointed out, Neil Gaiman himself backed this, says the casting is great, has pointed out the kinds of things that I myself have been pointing out in these videos to the people complaining about them. So, there isn't even the classic fallback of you're not honoring the original creator's intentions, because the original creator is going, no, it's fine, it's good. And like, look, here's the thing. I personally, I'm not saying they aren't out there. I don't know. Like I said, there was only so long that I was prepared to scour Twitter. But, I wasn't able to find anything complaining about this casting for Death that didn't at some point bring up her race. But here's the thing. If you want to try and make the argument that you do not believe that Kirby Howell Baptiste will give a good performance, you don't believe she is going to be able to pull off the role as an actress, there's no need to bring her race into that argument. But the problem is, that's a really flimsy argument on itself. Because you can say, I don't think she will be able to, but it's your suspicion. You don't know. You didn't see her read for the part. And you won't know until it comes out. Now, maybe when the show comes out, people will look at it and go, oh, she didn't quite pull it off. 
And that'll be a shame. Sure hope that doesn't happen. But you don't know that ahead of time, even if you know her other work. Actors have range. They can surprise you. I am old enough to remember how many people were up in arms at the idea that Heath Ledger was cast as the Joker for The Dark Knight because everyone was like, oh, he's a pretty boy who can't act. Why the heck would you ever cast him? And then you know what? He showed up on screen and shut everybody up because he was that good. You don't know if they can pull it off until you see them try and do it. So even if you're going to make an argument that you don't think she'll be good in the part, you don't have a lot to hang that on. Which maybe is why I couldn't find any instances of somebody making that claim without eventually also bringing up her race. And quick side note, the other one of these announcements that I got a real kick out of. So you may have noticed on that list, uh, especially if you're a Whovian, Jenna Coleman as Johanna Constantine. Now, here's what's funny. There is a Lady Constantine who does appear in the Sandman, it's John Constantine's ancestor. A ton of people saw that and immediately assumed, oh my god, they gender flipped John Constantine. Which, to be fair, maybe they have. I don't know that. But again, it's very telling what kind of knowledge these people actually have of the source material, that that's where their brain immediately went. Because like I can say, I, I actually can't see where maybe that's a possibility. But my first assumption is that she's going to be playing the female uh, ancestor of John Constantine who's in the story. Why would you immediately leap to the conclusion that they have gender flipped John Constantine unless you're looking for reasons to be angry? Because that's, again, a possibility, but it's not the logical first conclusion. And given the fact that it's not logically your first conclusion, you shouldn't have a lot of faith in that conclusion because it's not the most obvious answer. Like, if someone wanted to make a claim, this is my prediction, I want to see if I'm right, okay, but like, if you're, if you're so firm in that belief that you're complaining about it, I can't... Come on! It's just been a really particularly bonkers instance of, you know, like I said, this kind of crap happens all the dang time, but this one was especially revealing because if you know anything about the character, if you know anything about the source material, there aren't a lot of firm grounds to be complaining about casting like this. And, given the fact that Neil Gaiman is supporting all of this, you can't say that it's messing up his vision because he's signed off on it. So despite having really no legs to stand on, people are still making these complaints. <sighs> Got that one off my chest. And look, I'm not saying that you have to like this casting. You don't. I'll be honest, I'm a little antsy about the idea of Patton Oswalt as Matthew the Raven. I like Patton Oswalt well enough, but I'm not sure I want his voice coming out of that bird. But I'm also going to wait and see. We'll see. You don't have to like the casting. But be really careful about how you're going to complain about it. And if that requires a little self-examination to, like, really figure out in your own mind why you aren't okay with it, uh, maybe take the time to do that. You don't have to be thrilled with it. But if you're saying, this is wrong and this won't work, why? I mean, really, why? There you go. Sandman casting my ramble on it that was hopefully coherent. Uh, but what are your thoughts on this? Whatever they are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Like, share, subscribe. I have a Patreon. Link in the description. There-ish. Somewhere. Um, there are perks for every tier. All that sort of stuff. But, uh, no pressure. The, uh, the other stuff I mentioned, like, share, subscribe, it helps me out as well. Hit the bell! Hey, why not? But no big pressure on that either. Take a relaxed attitude around here, so you can just come on back next time you need a break.